Good morning, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, Magnetic Reversal News and Sacred Geography. We're bringing you a Mauna Loa update Tuesday, November 29th, 9.30 a.m. Mountain Time. Several developments in the last 18 hours have occurred during the eruption. Multiple fissures have opened and the lava is now flowing downslope to the northeast, as we suggested yesterday in our update. And that do, was due to the seismicity. So let's get on with all the latest news. Mauna Loa Volcano Ash Advisory with volcanic ash clouds mixed with gas have been observed to 45,000 feet. And that means Pelly's hair, hail, hair and lays. So very dangerous conditions if you're breathing in that ash. Now the alert level is still color code red. And here's the latest update, just came out a few minutes ago. The eruption of Mauna Loa continues on the northeast rift zone. Three fissures erupted as of 1.30 p.m. Only the lowest of the three fissures is now active. Estimates of the tallest fountain heights are between 100 and 200 feet, but some of them are much higher now, and most are a few meters tall. The fissures sent lava flows to the northeast and parallel to the rift zones. Lava flows from the two highest fissures are moving down slope, but stalled at about 11 miles from Saddle Road. Fissure 3 is currently feeding lava flows moving east parallel to the northeast rift zone. These remain, remain at and above 10,000 feet elevation and over 10 miles away from Saddle Road. They do not expect the upper fissures to reactivate. However, additional fissures could open up along the northeast rift zone below the current location and lava flows can then continue to travel down slope. There is no active lava within the Moku Aweoweo caldera anymore and there is no lava erupting from the southwest rift zone. They do not expect any eruptive activity outside the northeast rift zone at this time. There is no property at risk currently and there is no visible gas plume from the erupting fissure fountains and lava flows with the plume primarily being blown to the northwest. Let's take a look at that. But first we're going to give you a shot of Kilauea and Mauna Loa both erupting at the same time. This is a very historic picture and we do have some live stream footage here. This was earlier before the sun began to rise. Let's bring it forward and see where we're at. Here you can see uh, that fissure with the main lava flow moving 11 miles from the caldera still far away from Saddle Road. That's where these people are filming from, about another 10 miles from Saddle Road. And let's come over to one other live stream at Two Pineapples, where they, they have a close-up in here of the main fissures, and they're pretty active. But they've got all this dumb stuff in front of the picture, so we can't see it. But all the links to the live streams will be below. As Mauna Loa Lava flows are moving in the best possible direction, and that's pretty good news. And here we do have an update on a map showing where those lava flows are coming from. Here's the main caldera. Now, yesterday we showed you that there was a huge amount of seismic activity to the northeast of the caldera and suggested that's where there would be some fissure eruptions, and certainly that's exactly what happened. So here we are at the current seismic map over at the USGS, and what we can see is that the, here's the caldera. This is where the north fissures are happening. There is now renewed activity down here to the southeast. We could see a southeast fissure uh, opening up, and then the lava flows will be moving south and east here towards populated areas. So this could be a bad scenario if these fissures open up, but the flow is currently down the spine here and to the north. We're, and there's very little activity here. This is all old lava flows. There's no forest in the way here to light up. It's all lava on lava with just a few grasses. So there, there's no potential for forest fire. But if the southeast region were to fissure, and that is where this seismic activity, the signature is happening now east and to the southeast as opposed to the northeast. So the activity was centered up here yesterday. The fissures uh, erupted here, in fact, on the spine and are flowing to the north and the east. But now the seismicity is to the southeast, so I would expect some fissures potentially to open up to the southeast and start flowing to the south. Here is that current active eruptive fissure and the flow 
moving to this direction. So if we come over on the map, that's going to be here on the ridge and flowing down here. This is where the concentration of seismicity is happening. That is where the current fissure is. Now there have been many eruptions here, 1843, 1899, 1949. Here's an 1880 flow that made it all the way south. Uh, this is the furthest southern flow here. So probably not going to affect any houses in, uh, if it moves south. If it continues to flow towards Hilo, we could see something if this is a long-term eruption. Fissures could open up further and further down the ridge and closer and closer to Hilo. So that is uh, the potential. Now we have a high resolution map here where you can see a little better some of the flows that move down towards Hilo and some of the dating of that. And by colorizing them, you can see how some of these go for tens of miles like the 1855-1856 flow. Here's the 1880-1881 flow, almost made it all the way to the ocean. 1942 flow, just south of, just short of Hilo. 1852 flow was very similar to the 1942 flow. And it looks like we are mimicking these flows currently. Anything that comes out on the south, like I said, has not really made it to populated areas, but made it all the way down here during the 1880-81 eruption. And so we're going to be seeing something similar to what we're seeing here unless a different fissure opens up. But this is an ongoing, fantastic, scientific uh, experiment happening right in front of us where we can gather data and make more predictions on how this volcano, and there we can see some of that fissure activity where that lava may be going up to maybe 100 feet at the max. This is very thin lava not very viscous it flows very rapidly which is why it's already moved over 10 miles in under 24 hours and why some of these flows have made it to the ocean in just days so we have the map of the fissure eruption all the data will be linked below to keep you up to speed and we're closely monitoring the seismic situation and we'll be keeping an eye on the southeastern flank for new fissures to open up as has occurred in historic eruptions on Mauna Loa. So we have no imminent threat for homes or humans except for the air quality and there is VOG warnings. The Hawaii Interagency VOG information dashboard will be linked below where you can get information on bad air quality. So there's air quality data, there's VOG and wind forecasts. So go check it out. We'll leave you all the links below. One other thing happening simultaneous with the Mauna Loa eruption is the Ai, Ahi undersea volcano. We reported on this about a month ago as potentially erupting. And now new seismic unrest has raised the alert level to yellow. This is a submarine volcano that is erupting deep under the ocean. In fact, a plume of discolored water above Ahi undersea volcano has been visible constantly in satellite since the 18th of November. So this baby has been erupting at a depth of... Well, we don't have a depth, but it's very deep, thousands of feet underwater. We have an underwater eruption. At the same time, the historic Mauna Loa is erupting. The first time in 38 years has now traveled over 10 miles. New fissures have opened up, and we have one main fissure on the northern ridge north and east of the main caldera that is now running north and east down slope. So that is the latest update. Hope you got something out of the video. All the links will be below, and that's a boom to knowledge. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance. Stay tuned for more updates and join us over at Oppenheimer Ranch Project for the daily update later tonight.